Jesus, the one who frequently cautioned us about hell, is the one who rescues us from the place of eternal torment. Reconciliation with God is possible for anybody who has belief in Jesus Christ, regardless of the amount of personal merit or virtue they possess. Jesus fulfills the covenant's requirements. John 5.22-25, Amplified Bible For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment, that is, the prerogative of judging, to the Son, placing it entirely into his hands, so that all will give honor, reverence, homage to the Son, just as they give honor to the Father. In fact, the one who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who has sent him. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, the person who hears my word, the one who heeds my message, and believes and trusts in him who sent me, has possesses now eternal life, that is, eternal life actually begins, the believer is transformed, and does not come into judgment and condemnation, but has passed over from death into life. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, a time is coming, and is here now, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear it will live. John 3.16-18 Amplified Bible For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Saviour shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge and condemn the world, that is, to initiate the final judgment of the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes and has decided to trust in him as personal Saviour and Lord is not judged. For this one there is no judgment, no rejection, no condemnation. For the one who does not believe and has decided to reject him as personal Saviour and Lord is judged already. That one has been convicted and sentenced, because he has not believed and trusted in the name of the one and only begotten Son of God, the one who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, the one who alone can save him. If you haven't put your trust in him yet, now is not the time to put it off any longer. It is not too late to turn to God right now. But someday it will be too late. Regarding hell, C.S. Lewis once wrote, There is no doctrine which I would more willingly remove from Christianity than this, if it lay in my power. But it has the full support of Scripture, and especially our Lord's own words. It has always been held by Christendom, and it has the support of reason. If a game is played, it must be possible to lose it. Jesus talked a lot about hell in his teachings, in fact, we can glean more information about hell from Jesus' words than from any other chapter of the Bible combined. Jesus spoke of hell as outer darkness. Matthew 8.12 While the sons and heirs of the kingdom, the descendants of Abraham, who will not recognize me as Messiah, will be thrown out into the outer darkness in that place which is farthest removed from the kingdom, there will be weeping in sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth in distress and anger. He mentions fire in relation to hell at least 20 times. Matthew 5.22 But I say to you that everyone who continues to be angry with his brother or harbors malice against him shall be guilty before the court. And whoever speaks contemptuously and insultingly to his brother, Raka, you empty-headed idiot, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, Sanhedrin, and whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of the fiery hell. Matthew 18, 9 If your eye causes you to stumble and sin, pluck it out and throw it away from you. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. It is better for you to enter life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fiery hell. At the end of time, Everyone will stand before Jesus Christ, and he will separate humanity into sheep, those who display their faith in Jesus via their good actions, and goats, those who do not demonstrate their faith in Jesus through their good works, those who did not trust in Jesus Christ.
The goats, on the other hand, will go away into eternal punishment, and the sheep will get eternal life. God the Father blesses and gives an inheritance to the sheep on Jesus' right hand. The reason is stated, For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. The righteous will not understand. When did they see Jesus in such a pitiful condition and help him? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. The goats on Jesus' left hand are doomed with eternal hellfire because they are prepared for the devils and his angels. The explanation offered is that they had an opportunity to minister to the Lord, but did nothing. The damned ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? Jesus replies, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Jesus then ends the discourse with a contrast. They will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Matthew 25, 46, Amplified Bible. Then these unbelievable people will go away into eternal, unending punishment. But those who are righteous and in right standing with God will go by his remarkable grace into eternal, unending life. Jesus uses strong language about hell because it is an actual place and unimaginably dreadful. But he did more than just warn about the perils of hell. He also provided a path out of it. He defeated sin, death, and the devil by living a life of perfect obedience. By dying a sacrificial death on the cross for our sins and by rising from the dead to demonstrate his victory over sin and death, he encourages everyone to put their faith in him to avoid the eternal punishment they all deserve for their sins and earn eternal life instead. Jesus unfailingly distinguished hell with the kingdom of God. Hell is the only choice to an eternity spent in God's kingdom, and it is the opposite of excellent fellowship with God eternally. We will summarize Jesus' teachings about hell with five words. Reality, rebellion, regret, relentlessness, and reconciliation.